Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a long time since I last uploaded a video um, and the main reason is because I, I was really stressed and I wanted to take some time off to really think about what are the videos I wanted to ma be making and what, the th what are the things that I enjoy doing that, and I wanted to do. Um, so apologies on that and definitely more to come in the future. Now, in during the time that I took off from like making videos, I really spent a lot of time painting away as a way to both take my mind off of like the daily thinking um, and just like the the daily struggles that I kind of encounter every day. And in a in a way, it's helped me. It's helped me kind of put my mind into a different space and dimensions where I can just immerse in the process, in the paintbrush and the paint and the drawing and everything and not having to have my mind getting caught up in a lot of thinking. So it's definitely been very helpful, very helpful for me in this process of figuring things out. So today I wanted to take you on one of the painting process that I've gone that I'm going through so far to just kind of forget about the day-to-day -day things for a little bit and immerse into the space of the paper and the paint and everything. So it's definitely bring it's definitely has brought me a lot of joy and healing and therapeutic in a way. So by sharing this with you, I hope that it'll bring some of that for me to you. Um, and hope that you will get to incorporate it into your life in some type of way even no matter what you're gonna do no matter where no matter whether you're gonna paint with me along or just watch me f figuring my way out struggling along the way and um, finally feeling happy that I did something good for myself for the day so let's get right into it to get started and give you some context of the thing I'm trying to do, I recently tried to paint with gouache. Um, not sure how to exactly pronounce it, but it is opaque watercolor. Um, I had more experience working with oil, primarily oil. Um, so this is so I was really excited to try out some type of watercolor. So here I am just using a pencil. I think it's an HB pencil and like a little eraser to kind of trace out where the rocks, individual rocks is, where the main shapes are generally are, um, so that I can um, just put in color with like so that so that I have enough guidance for me when it comes to like putting in the putting in the color. So far, the medium has been quite tricky to use because I tend to still have a lot of the ten. The tendency from like oil painting kind of carry over with gouache so um, it's definitely the trickiest thing is to do with the highlight where I think for watercolor um, to kind of preserve the highlight you kind of have to be um, kind of have to save the white part of the paper to make it look as white as possible whereas in oil you you can easily go over anything with titanium white and it will look as white as the titanium white as long as you don't muddle the paint with the paint under the paint layer underneath or the paint layer that you already have on your brush then you have a pretty bright highlight so i'm just m mapping them out and now i doing i did a, a light wash wash <laughs> of um just like the the watercolor like by watercolor, like the actual water water of the fall. It has this pristine greenish blue um, that is just so beautiful and very, and also a, another very tricky subject to paint. But today, the star of the show is the rocks. Um, so as you can see, I'm just using a mix of burnt umber and ivory black and blue. Um, and I think I also use some um, olorzen, some crimson red to kind of um, give give it that a little red reddish tinge. Um, so just mapping out all the the rocks' general shapes are and where they where they lies in the composition. 
as you can see um, to kind of balance out the composition I add some rocks on the top left and to kind of balance out like the scattered rocks in the top right corner um, hopefully those top portion would kind of help balance out the heavy rocks body in the bottom of the composition but um, <clears throat> yeah this is how I approach it is that it's just like a study and um, no string attached I don't have to be I'm not too precious with my brush or the color or anything I just the goal is just trying to kind of understand the shapes and where the lights hitting them at different place and how the color gonna change from one to another so this is another thing that I'm quite enjoy doing with watch watch gouache color is to kind of go back with a with a pointed brush and kind of map out the kind of map out where the main lines are but to be honest I in this stage even though I really try to be precise with my color pencil mark to kind of help me guide where the rocks are exactly at this stage it's kind of like lost it for me it's like yeah I know the lines here this line and this line but honestly I have no idea what the lines indicate and like what I meant when I draw them in the first place so it's just yeah most most of, most of the time free-flowing uh, type of line situation for me and now I'm moving on to the highlights portion or I have to say I think the mid midtone so the, the ones that are not like exactly the brightest but not entirely the darkest um, to kind of like help identify the main shapes where they are facing um, and, the, and then you can see in the rocks on the top of the of the main rocks body is where it's kind of like there but it's sp splashed it, it got water splashed onto them so the color is more subdued and a bit more abstract than those one in the um, bottom of the compositions where it's a bit more defined and the um, the shadows and the highlights are a bit more pronounced so as you can see I'm moving kind of back and forth between uh, using the shadows and using the midtone and the highlight to kind of help communicate the shapes of the rocks I'm not sure how effective I, I was over there but um, also at the same time I am trying to use a new techniques that I just learned with watercolor is that kind of bleeding in edges so I would have the dark shadow dark dark I think I was using ivory black and kind of add a bit more kind of fun toned with um, the crimson red and the burnt umber that I had right there to kind of add the a bit more richness to the to the black per se and then I was using the mid-tone to kind of map out the, the shapes of the rocks where it kind of facing the sun and then I was trying to use the both the dark tone dark value and the mid-tone to kind of bleed them together to kind of create this um, kind of elusive shape of the of the rock because as you can see rocks are not like man-made shapes so it's not like a, 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 a complete square but it's not like a complete circle either it doesn't have like any concrete shape so I find this bleeding techniques really help um, let the color do the work and let the bleeding does the blending for me and it looks pretty fun too and honestly when I was doing this I had no idea how it's gonna turn out because I literally just learned about this bleeding techniques the other day when I was watching a watercolor course and it just looks really fun to me and looking all the colors doing its things and I'm just there letting the color flow through me it's a lot of back and forth push and pull with the dark and the light it kind of make me feel like reveal a sense of um softness and like lightness or like flowiness to the rocks that i really enjoy
So now I'm just kind of like going back with the water splashing and trying to take, trying to give these little rocks guys out in the open water a bit more love and cares. So, and to be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Um, so I'm just, yeah adding a little bit of like reflections of the rocks on the water or a lot of it is like the water is splashing through from the top to the bottom and also from the left to the right so whatever water kind of splashed through these rocks is kind of like leave this like bleeding edge of a uh, reflection of the rocks under the water which looks pretty cool and just like a an elongate version of the rocks under the water um, and now at the same time I'm also trying to use a lot of white to kind of communicate this kind of splashiness of the water but I have to say it's tricky I'm just trying my best to let the medium do its thing and bleed the light color onto the dark color and let the color bleed to make it looks like a water like effect but this is what I was able to kind of achieve so far with my color and my rocks painting but as a study i'm pretty happy with it something that i'm pondering a lot these days when especially after i listen to um, a podcast from with from tim paris not tim tim ferris he had this great um podcast with this author that wrote um, how to do things with ease there's two things I took away from it one is that um, it's not that good things happen to you and then you get in a good state it's more that you are in a good state and then good thing will flow to you um, and kind of like the the way they rationalize he rationalize it it's more in terms of like when you are in a good state you are Kind of like allow more spaciousness to kind of flow through you and then kind of through that in a way you are able to see things clearer and you are you you are able to see many different paths or like decision or like direction you can take from like a situ certain situation as opposed to when you are in like a negative state i think i talked about this way way back in one of the beginning of the one of the beginning videos it's like you're in that negative state everything is hard everything default to be really hard and you can only see one path through and it's it's just hard so um it's something i kind of like been pondering a lot in terms of like how can i make it easy I is there an easier way to do this why does it feel so hard and like just be more curious in terms of like what it's actually going on in my mind it's like why is it so hard is there an easier way out um if it's and like how can i take a step back and just like throw myself into it instead of just like resisting it so hard um so it's it's something that's definitely in on my mind and in that in the combination of another podcast i listened to with um oprah and Brené brown and she talked about the fact that the, the 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 emotion of joy is the most dreadful because you're seeing this thing that's happening so well to you everything is going good and all of a sudden you find yourself pinching it's like everything been so good to me something bad gonna happen so it's kind of ruined the joy of like a lot of people and i know i find myself in that place before and the only way maybe not the only way but like the way that she was suggesting to kind of really embrace the joy and the emotion is to curate a sense of gratitude in your life it's like it's not about the next moment or the past but more about like the present moment instead of like worrying about what happening in the future or what might happen what might happen in the future or what already happened in the past and like just beating yourself up about it but instead curate a sense of gratitude in terms of like all the things that happened in my life that lead me to this moment that allow me to enjoy this moment with my loved one um, and focus on that emotion instead of that worriness 
is something that I find really liberating for me since um, since I listened to that one and for and so far for a couple of days um, just really focus on living the moment just be curious with my mind and um, try to find just a couple things like little things that I am grateful for in my life it doesn't have to be grand big things it's like it has to be something small because by appreciating the small things you will learn to appreciate the big things and not the other way around seems like so an exercise like painting like this really helped me kind of put my mind into that frame from like painting the little rocks it's like bring a sense of me how I felt more connected to the rocks in a way and it's it just feel really great and from being able to connect to that rocks like that I was able to kind of appreciate it and to kind of understand like the little things it might seem like it's just a little rocks now but who knows it went through so many transformation maybe it was a big rocks on a big mountain and somehow some way the water kind of bring it down to me and kind of put it in front of me for me to paint and there were a lot of decision and moment happening in my life and in the rocks life that put us to meet in that moment like that i don't know i might be rambling but just little things like that really helped me feel more human and appreciate the little moments in my life and um in a way make things a bit more easier so i hope that um you will be able to take away from today kind of painting session a little ramb rambling session um to remind yourself to appreciate the little things and to be curious with what is going on in your mind what you are going through and how you can bring a sense of gratitude into your daily routine i'll see you in your next one bye